you know that that older school filmmaking is so beautiful to me it's so less corporate you hear about like the old national lampoon and you know like caddyshack yeah where they took the script and they were just like you know what these guys are funnier than me here's where the scene starts yeah. here's where the scene ends you guys you oh, guys get it going uh, yeah you know, I, the, the what's it called the um the 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 old wives tale that the myth of the famous monologue from bill murray you know so i jump ship in hong kong and i make my way over to the bet apparently murray was just passing time between set like he was coming off the top of his head and the director's like you believe your shit just just start rolling they're just rolling and he's getting into character yeah and you can see the kid laughing the actor who has like the pitchfork is yeah. laughing the whole right. time because he's not in character they don't know they're rolling but apparently that's just what it was like on set there the whole yeah. time they were just going man but that's the beauty see that's the smart thing about a director like the many times when you see some directors they hate to take especially writer directors are the worst and I'm a writer director say my line but I'm always like if you had a line that's better than mine and you feel comfortable you say that line fuck my line get it out that's the real right way mm -hmm. to do it because what are you protecting your, your movie from a, a great idea right but that's the way it is in life it's an ego thing it's too, an though, ego yeah. thing yeah like if some people go if I didn't come up with this idea then I can't be this talented. Mm. So I got to stick with my idea. Interesting. When I'm directing a movie, man, there are a bunch of times where I went, okay, we're going to set up here and everything, and we're just about to say, all right, let's move the camera here. I want this. I want that. And all of a sudden, the first AD will say to me, though, he'll go, hey, Chaz, you know, if you, if you, shoot, a, if you shoot it the scene on that window, you're going to get the, the sun's coming. It's better there. You're going to get the sunrise, the, uh, you know, sun, mm -hmm. sunset. And I went, now, this is right in front of the whole crew. I went, fuck that. He's right. Move everything. Uh, you know. Yeah, good for yeah. you. Be to yeah. Yeah, not have that it's, ego that's going to hold you it's back. About, like it's that. about a final Be, product. It's about, it's, about, right. it's about the product. What, what am I doing? He was right. I was wrong. Yeah. yeah. I picked the wrong window. You'd be what? surprised how rare that is, though. It doesn't even have to be it is, wrong. You know? it, 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 it just is, is better. No, it's you know? just, it's like, I didn't see it. I'm looking at a hundred different yeah. things. A lot of, saw it. Yeah, a lot of people are, like, trying to do, like, almost, like, pow, play totally. power plays. Yeah. And they don't want to, like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, so, it's it, and to the detriment of their own product. Exactly. Which is, you know what I mean? It's, it's such a shame. You and see, it shuts down the creativity on the set. Because yeah, once absolutely. somebody once has a good idea, that, that's it. everybody knows, oh, i got to shut up until this thing's done. And But once you take a good person's idea, they all go, oh, shit. Hey, hey, Chaz, uh, you know, I mean, you got to know when to draw the line out. Sure, sure. But if, if somebody, I always say, if you have a great idea, you tell me. Mm -hmm. If I like it, I'll use it. If I don't like it, I won't use it. There's a scene in Bronx Tale where uh, one of the actors, I forgot his name, he comes out of the bar, and we needed a like, piece of business to fill in this, like, four seconds. And I came up with something, and it wasn't that good. And Bob came up with something, and it wasn't that good. And then we both came up with something, and that wasn't that good. And I said, what the hell? And we were trying to figure it out. And the guy flipping hamburgers, the crib service guy, was right next to us. And he's flipping the burgers. He was a real neighborhood guy from Brooklyn. He goes, uh, hey, Bobby. You know, I know he knows guys. <laughs> hey, Bob. Jazz. We go, yeah? He goes, I know what you're looking for. I got a great idea for that part. So, you know, we say, what? Remember years ago when the number used to play the numbers and like, what number's leading? And they would say, what number's leading? And the guy would go, ah, the three's leading. Give me the three. You know, they would put the thing on the top of the head, three mm -hmm. or two or one. I said, yeah. He goes, why don't you do that? He asked him what number's leading, you know, the whole number thing. Wow. And I went like this. What did, tell us that, <laughs> <laughs> and and you you see the movie, and Bob wow. Bob loved it, and I loved yeah. it, obviously, and it's in the movie. I love about that the authenticity of the fact that your movie was a time period piece, also, which yeah. you know, sixty like, sixty to sixty eight. adds how much money to the budget you needed for that I thing can, too, because yeah, you know, yeah. did they, well, did they ever try to 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 force you to try to make it contemporary for uh, for budgetary no. reasons? No, they they. I, I, a few places mentioned it, but we just, I just yeah, said, no. don't, don't even. Stop. Oh, the thing, the thing should I heard first, I had one studio that loved it, and I, I wasn't going to make it with them, but they, uh, they said, you got to take out the, the girl, the black and white thing. Really? And I said, huh. and, I, and I was just curious. I said, why is that? They said, it slows up the movie. It's really between the three people. I said, no. 
That's the idea. The kids growing up. Yeah. In front, you know, that's it, one of the most beautiful commentary, parts. It's, of it's the a commentary movie. on that well, point in time. And, yeah. and, and, and how movie. and how he grew, how his father looks at one thing and how the son he looks wow. at one thing. So it was that was dumb. And the next thing was that'd the, be the whole thing that sold the movie yeah, today. And, and a big yeah, thing, for real. right? A big thing. They didn't want Sonny to die. Because they uh, wanted a sequel. I remember reading about that. They didn't want Sonny about to die. That. They yeah. want a sequel. It made so much money, well, man. They, you know? they, they just thought Sonny was such a beloved character and everybody loved him that they didn't want him to die. That it would be a downer. I remember the head studio guy said, well, that's a depressing if Sonny dies. <sighs> that's what made it so perfect. I said, let me explain something to you. I said, Sonny dies, it's a catharsis. Sure. It's actually a happy ending. Yeah. Once he dies... The boy realizes his father was right. Sonny's not the hero. Kolojiro's the hero. Kolojiro and the father are the Lorenzo, heroes. Yeah. So the boy sees. It's a catharsis. He learns. Sure. Romeo and Juliet is a happy ending. They both kill themselves, but the families come together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, in every tragedy, there's, it's a catharsis. Sure. Some, you learn yeah. something from it. Mm. So, you know, Romeo and Juliet, at the uh, uh, West Side Story. Thank God you told him you know, all to fuck off. No, well, because <laughs> that would have it would have changed the movie so well, much. Well, I was know? blessed because I had De Niro. Right, I, he had all the power. Bob, Bob had all the power, and Bob just like the fuck out of here. You know, wow. and he took your back like with everything. Everything, like, beautiful. He, he, awesome. he was he was just incredible, and I, I say this all the time. I, I've always said this: a bad director could fuck up a great script mm. a, in a heartbeat. It's the director's vision, and he took my script. And he, I, he he let me be the only one to touch it, mm. and he just let it fly. Awesome. So, and that I'm, he's responsible for how great that movie. It's all, it's an almost perfect yeah. movie, man. I yeah, mean, it's an a, almost yeah, perfect uh, yeah. movie. Yeah. I mean, it is. It, it's the the acting, the directing, the dialogue, everything about it. With I mean, the score is iconic. Yeah. Nobody can listen to the Beatles without going. Now you can't leave. Like you know, I yeah, mean, I it's I, I mean, it, it's just. I mean, when you were making it, at what point when you were making it were you like, this is special? We got well, something good here. Yeah, nobody ever knows, Gerard. That's a good question. I knew it was good. I knew in my heart it was good. And the only, and the reason why I knew that. And then you get that kind of trepidation like, man, don't screw it up. No, post. no, no. Don't yeah, screw right. it up. No, post. the reason why I knew that was because Bob took my script and put it on, he put it on there, and the scenes worked. Because I did them already. Yeah, you knew. I knew. But that doesn't always translate. It doesn't always translate. But I knew that West they West Side were. Story you were talking about. West Side Story is one of the best plays you'll ever see. It doesn't translate the film. Uh, well, I know. I thought, I, the original one, was. I thought it was great. Yeah. Well, that's, that's cool. Who am I to disagree? No, no. To disagree. But it, it, it just worked. And I remember saying to Bob a few times, Bob, I'm telling you the dialogue here. It's going to work. You'll see. And certain thing, and it worked, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I I performed it. When you right, that, see, when you see the show, when you see my one man show, you got to mm -hmm. look at that and go, "Holy shit, he did this before the movie." Yeah. You're gonna say, "That's the fucking movie." That's the movie. That's the movie. I, mean, I do a Bronx Tale on stage alone. I play all the characters, eighteen yeah, characters. I've heard. Now you say, "How the fuck could that be?" I don't know. I figured out a way to do it. Mm. I don't know. Now that what what you guys were saying before, how you were saying like like trust the trust the words, like trust the the script, like you know it's gonna work. For you two, you performing on stage and you performing on stage, mm -hmm. just then when you get into like a the acting climate where you don't see the reaction of a crowd or an audience, right. does that could that almost like kind of shake you guys or almost like cha like change your like you're like I don't know if it's killing. Like if you you wouldn't know if the jokes are good or you wouldn't know if you're gonna elicit the proper emotions. Right. Like, is that like a is that something like that actors or comedians? Well, for me, it, comedian it, it depends on how on how far along into the bit I am. Like, if I've done this bit for six months and it kills every time, I need to, like, real quickly ascertain, like, is, is my delivery off or are these people just out of it? No, no, no. I'm saying if now you're doing it on, like, film where you're not in front of an audience, like, it's, it's if it's, like, quiet on set and mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Like, you aren't hearing the laughter of the crowd. Right. Oh, or, I, or yeah. if you, well, you just, in comedy, he has to have a crowd there. Have to. He but has if, to have if, a crowd. but I'm, I, maybe I wasn't clear. If like if a difference between stage acting and acting like on film. Yeah. Right. Like on on the stage, you're getting like you're you know you can kind of feel the crowd yes. and certain things like that. And you in acting that you've done. Right. If you're not getting like the laughter and stuff, could it throw you a little well, bit? Well, it's really the difference. And Chaz obviously speaks on this, but I mean, theater acting from television acting, like. Right. 
you know, something that we would call the perfect 10, where somebody's like really big in their movements and they're, they're very slow mm. in their cadence. That's perfect for theater. You're allowing people to be a part of it. There's almost like a wink and a nod breaking that fourth wall. Right. But if somebody goes that big in their, you know, really television, it's, it's, it's more about, yeah, it's more about subtlety. Thrown. I mean, some yeah. of the best actors in the world. Subtle. It's their eyes. Uh-huh. Their eyes right. are, are, are right. communicating. On screen. With them. I mean, right. I've been in. I've been, you know, on Broadway, and I've been in. And I've been in some great, great plays, and I've been in some bad plays. And boy, when you're in a bad play, it's rough. That's got to be mm. tough. You're standing on stage with your pants down. Yeah. You feel it. The jokes mm-hmm. ain't working. Mm. You're dying up there. Yeah. <laughs> and it's horrible. But you know, the good thing about a play is that it's over soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. You know, you hope it's over soon. Do you ever yeah. feel like calling time out and going to one of your actors and be like, no, you want to say the line this way? No. This is why it's I not remember, landing. I remember first starting out, I did a play at the American Theater of Actors, and it was just a bad play. But, you know, as a young actor, you take the job. You know, you, I was in my 20s, and I just, I was so happy I got a part, and I did this, and it, was, it sucked. And the, the reason why it sucked was because that's been a long time, so I could say it. The director put his girlfriend as oh, the lead. There it is. <laughs> okay, and she was not up to the task. So I'm in this play with her, and she's terrible. And I'm acting with her. I just want to go. All right, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I know this sucks. And I'm about to leave the stage right now. You'll never, ever see me again on stage. God bless you. Good night. (laughs)